This is a tale of two sisters, Jackie and Gail. Some people in life are lucky to have a soulmate twin. I had the next best thing. Jackie was 22 months younger, and I was blessed with her presence for almost 70 years. As the old saying goes, opposites attract, and Jackie and I were oh so opposite, that we were not only sisters, our friendship defined us more. Mom often told the story that when Jackie was an infant, I was about two, I grabbed her by the legs and pulled her off the bed where Mom had her napping. Of course, I do not know what I was thinking at that time. Was I curious about this being invading my territory? Did I want to play with this beautiful doll? Or did I want her to hurry up and be my partner in crime? When Jackie was nearing eight and I was not quite 10, in the spring of 1959, we moved to a farm in Jasmine County into a 200-year-old house, and that's where the fun really began, and the bond between Jackie and me grew tighter. We had several playmates in town, but on the farm, our nearest neighbors were Harold and Callie Waits, their daughter Shirley and son Carl. On occasion, Susan or Marty Browning would come home with us from church. Jackie, Shirley, and I liked to go to the modern, fancy Browning house, and the Browning girls liked to come to the country. We did not realize the irreplaceable richness we were blessed to have. Our two older brothers, Lee and Bert, shared a room, and a larger room heated with a coal stove had three twin-sized beds for Jackie, our much younger sister Sarah, and me. Most days, with the exception of weekends, Jackie and I only had each other, sometimes trying to include Sarah. In our younger years, the two of us played with paper dolls, our beds becoming houses for the dolls. We played dress up with high heels in various garments, or pretend prairie in Western days, Jackie and I being Dale Evans or Annie Oakley and using tobacco sticks as horses and the back porch being our cafe or saloon. On weekends, as we got older, Mom would drop Jackie, Shirley Waite, and me at the movie theater or at a Lexington public pool in the summer while she ran errands. We were partners in crime, seeing our first age-restricted movie, Alfie, when we were not the appropriate age. Although Jackie and I really loved each other very much, we sometimes fought like a cat and a dog, really, for blood. Mom often reminded us later in life that was the biggest reason we got into trouble and the rod was not spared. Country living was exciting with chores city girls were not accustomed to. At first, Jackie and I fought over who was going to get to churn the clabbered milk into butter, but it wasn't long that we fought over who was not going to have to do the churning. Filling up the cold bucket in the winter soon got old too. We argued over who did it last and our memories always conflicted. We had a large yard that Jackie and I had to mow and we each claimed that we, uh, the, we mowed the bigger portion ourselves. We often got into trouble just for having fun, like swimming in the pond where the cows had been, not caring that the cows had relieved themselves in that water picking up a handful of disgusting moss and throwing it at each other. Jackie, Shirley, Susan, and I would swim in the creek where some of God's other creatures made their homes or used it as a cooling off spot. Jackie and I got in big trouble with mom when our clothes got all wet and sticky from a watermelon rind fight. We insisted that one of our brothers started it. We didn't realize what we were missing how much easier washing and drying clothes would be with an automatic washer and dryer. Mom had to wash the clothes in a ringer washing machine and hang dry on the line. In the winter, there were trips to the laundromat. Jackie and I, along with Shirley White, sitting down by the creek, learned about the birds and the bees from her set of golden book encyclopedias and thinking, how gross. The three of us each took a turn skateboarding down a hill on the one-lane Ashgrove Pike, while the other two watched for cars. It was brave Jackie, dared by Shirley and I, who stepped out on the not-so-frozen Hickman Creek. At least her dead leg didn't come out of the creek with the leeches attached to it like it did one summer. The three of us thought we were brave enough, being in high school, to camp out by the creek. 
When night rolled around and the noises started, we were terrified, but we did not want to give in to our parents saying, told you so, and go back to the house. We heard a very scary noise, and fortunately, it was Brother Burke to the rescue. We begged him to camp with us. By morning, we were freezing. Jackie was with a blanket over her shoulder doing some kind of powwow dance around the burned out campfire while making some weird noises. I had always thought she was part Indian with her dark skin. Our differences were early on, but our bond grew tight stronger with time. I had red hair, green eyes, fair skin with freckles, and the sun was my enemy. Jackie had dark hair, dark eyes, and olive skin that tanned golden. I liked math, Jackie liked history. Jackie was creative with story writing. I would punctuate her stories. I enjoyed cooking, making up my own recipes. Jackie said if God wanted everyone to be a cook, he would not have allowed restaurants. She joked seriously that all carry out restaurants in Nicholasville knew her voice. My husband teased that when Jackie said it was time to eat at her house, her family headed to the car. She didn't mind the teasing at all, but she did master broccoli casserole, and that was a definite for all family or church dinners. We were so more like friends than just sisters. We actually had a mutual friend, Lillian, who thought for quite some time after meeting us through her future husband, Jim, that we were friends, not sisters. I cared for my sister so much that when Bob Bellman, one of the most popular, good-looking athletes in our high school, asked Jackie out on a date to a YMCA swim party, I went to bat for Jackie, age 15, begging mom to let her go. It was against the rule of having to be 16 to date. Jackie and Bob fell in love. I know that because when summer came, Bob took a relocation job selling Bibles. He mailed a postcard to Jackie. I picked up the mail, turned over the postcard addressed to my sister, and with a small amount of guilt read, Jatane, Jatane, Jatane. Thanks to my French class, I could interpret, I love you, I love you, I love you. I have never forgotten, after over 50 years, the next sentence. I mean every word of it, Jackie. The next summer before starting college, Bob began selling Bibles in another assigned distant area. Jackie went with the Bellman family to visit Bob. He almost beat them back to Jessman County, Kentucky. He couldn't stay away, stay away from his Jackie. I knew he was really in love when he then took a job working construction for our father, whose nickname was Rawhide. That was a real test for both Bob and our father. Jackie and Bob dated exclusively for about five years. Unlike my sister, mine was a short courtship, about five months. But Jackie approved of Mike, and that was important to me. Otherwise, I would not have married him. We married six months apart, Jackie and Bob in July 1971, Mike and I in December. Jackie and I were blessed with husbands that immediately became good friends, strengthening even more the bond between us. In the spring of that year, Bob graduated college, was in the Army, and they were sent to Fort Sill, Oklahoma. The separation was not easy for Jackie and me. Mike and I made the trip to visit them. When I left my sister to return to Kentucky, I sat in the back seat of our car, and while Mike drove, I cried the entire trip home, about 13 hours. The distance separating us then got longer, with Bob being transferred to Washington State. Being somewhat newlyweds, expecting a child, Mike and I did not have the money to go visit them. They were able to fly home to Kentucky in December 1972 with the plans of seeing our expected baby before they had to return to Washington. Unfortunately, nature had other plans. I did not go into labor until the morning they had to catch a flight back. Jackie came by the hospital to hug me by. With both of us crying almost uncontrollably, she asked, why couldn't you do this yesterday? It was a full year before I saw her again. No cell phones then, just some very pricey phone bills. A few years later, in a short time after Jennifer was born, Jackie and Bob moved back to Kentucky, but then Mike and I moved away, eventually out of state. Again, my sister and I were separated, but only by miles. 
Jackie, Bob, Jennifer, and Rebecca always traveled to visit us and sometimes would meet somewhere for a vacation. Jackie got sick, e car sick easily, and even if going around the block as a passenger in a vehicle, she had to sit in the front seat. I never understood how she could love riding roller coasters, the kind with the ba big high heels and the very long drops, the kind with the 360 degree loops. I didn't have a problem sitting in the back seat of the car, Jackie riding in the front with my husband, Mike, if he was driving, but I was terrified of roller coasters with the hills and valleys. On one vacation trip, Jackie decided it was time that I got on one of those roller coasters called the Bind Bender with two 360 degree loops. I stupidly let her pull me into the line where she held one of my arms with both of her hands, knowing that if she let go, I was going to make a run for it, only for my sister. I had no voice left to scream at her when we got off that terrifying thing, but now I know it was so worth it, a memory of the two of us. Since living apart and traveling to visit each other, our friendships were multiplied. Jackie's and Bob's friends became ours, and Mike's and my friends instantly loved Jackie's zest for enjoying life and making the most of a fun time. Our friends are saddened not only for me, but for their loss of her also. Jackie's home was always inviting and welcoming. She was a perfect hostess for family gatherings, wedding showers, baby showers, derby parties, graduation parties, and countless other get-togethers, from very small to a very large one with a tent and a dance floor set up in her backyard. There were times in our growing up years when I, as a bigger and older sister, came to the aid of Jackie and she did the same for me. We did not keep score or fight about who did it the most. Our past are part of who we are, defining us. Jackie and I had an unspoken bond. No one goes through a childhood or growing up years without some pain, but through the not so happy times, Jackie and I had each other. I may have been the stronger one, the one who watched over my younger sisters during our younger years, but Jackie, became the one with so much strength and faith who inspired me to have hope, to put the sad times behind us and move forward with each day a new beginning. When the term sidekick is used, often it is associated with subservient, assistant, one with less authority, less strength. But when I say that Jackie was my sidekick, I think of the words aid, helper, strength, and prayer warrior. She was my earth angel who encouraged me during some tough times, even during the time she was fighting her battle with cancer. I wish I could have protected her from that terrible disease. I might have been the older one, but I looked up to and admired this beautiful lady who realized the blessings, blessings given by God, a family, and so many friends who live life to the fullest and did not stress over the small stuff. She is my inspiration to do better as a God-loving person, mother, grandmother, to not count the number of breaths we take, but to count the moments that take our breaths away. I was so honored when my sister requested my presence to help care for her in those last few days. She knew I would do my best. She knew how much I loved her. My heart is so broken. I could not save her to be with us on this earth for a while longer. I know that she is in a place of immeasurable joy. No one knew our bond, our total history, our total story, only Jackie and I, and much of it unspoken. There is now a void, a hole in my heart, but I know the memory she gave me will once again bring a smile to my face. I promise you, my precious sister, that I will try my very best to treasure each of my remaining days of life on earth, to focus on making memories with my loved ones, to face each day with a smile and a hope, knowing that one day you and I will be reunited. I love you, Jackie.